very good morning to all. So the presentation for this day is Diplopia Management. So Diplopia is a distressing symptom compromising the quality of the life, particularly in the practical field of fixation, which is going to be primary and treating position. So you need to have a thorough history taking before uh, going into the proper evaluation of Diplopia. You need to understand whether the patient is complaining of true Diplopia or just a blur. It has to be uh, differentiated between monocular or binocular. Onset, frequency, direction, whether it is horizontal or vertical. Torsion, if there is any tilting of images. When is diplopia getting worse, whether in a particular direction of gaze or when looking for near, far or near, or when tired to rule out myasthenia gravis. So let me take you uh, through the next few slides about the systematic approach of a case of a diplopia. The first basic step we need to do is to cover one eye to um, confirm whether you are dealing with a case of a double vision or a single vision. So diplopia, after covering one eye, still the patient complained of double vision, it is going to be a monocular diplopia. The immediate test needed is to do a small uh, pinhole test and still patient complains of single vision, it is going to be because of media opacities. Patient still complain of double vision, it might be because of retinal membranes and sensory causes. So when covering the one eye, patient uh, immediately tells it is going to be single, then we are dealing with the proper case of a diplopia. So immediate test is to be done is cover test. So cover test will reveal either an orthophoria or a heterophoria. If it is orthophoria, it is going to be most likely a physiological diplopia. If there is a presence of an obvious squint in the presence of heterotopia, the next immediate test and the simplest test to uh, do is the red filter test, so which will give you the following observation, whether it is going to be a crossed exotropia, uncrossed, it is going to be esotropia, whether it is vertical or there is any tilting of images, which is going to be a torsional diplopia, or very rarely it can be a paradoxical diplopia. And then there might be special test which might be needed to, in the cases of diplopia, which is going to be diplopia chart, H chart, and uh, Belchowski's head tilt test, and sometimes nine gaze measurements. And torsion uh, has to be evaluated with double metox test wherever necessary. So having uh, evaluated the case of diplopia, now what are we going to do? The simplest goal is to provide a clear, comfortable and single vision over as wide a motor range as possible. There are two ways of looking into it. Either try to fuse to a single image with the help of prisms, botulinum toxin or surgery. Or if it is not possible for some reasons, at least try to eliminate the second image with the help of occluders and patches. So prisms is very effective in most of the uh, patients, but only thing is it is effective only for a small committent and incommittent deviations. There are two types of prisms, ground-in prisms and prenal prisms. The ground-in prisms is uh, better visual acuity and better cosmosis, but the disadvantage is being a waiting time for the manufacturing and uh, dispensing, weight, expensive and frame limitations for edges and shapes. Over uh, to prenal prisms, it has a few advantages of restoring a comfortable single vision and allows a good depth perception easy to change and can be used in sectors as well and it is lightweight but the main uh, disadvantage is being a reduced vision distortions and reflections and it is very obviously seen from outside giving a cosmetic appearance and uh, uh, fusion with prisms has been uh, studied extensively in many of the publications and it's been found to be very effective the successful use of prisms is uh, the careful selection of patients and patients expectations only things needed is a good compliance and follow-up from the patients Botulinum toxin is tried in many cases and it uh, chemically relaxes the unopposed muscle that is prone to contracture. Uh, this is the uh, standard dose which is available in many of the textbooks. And Botox is not uh, found to be of much useful in a long term uh, benefit in the cases of a diabetic or vascular origin. But in the cases of severe paralysis of traumatic origin and intracranial pathology, definitely Botox helps. The advantage is being in acute cases it relieves double vision and prevents contracture does not depend on patient complaints and sometimes it can be combined with transposition procedures to prevent ASI. Surgery is needed whenever it is, uh, there is an indication. In committant strabismus, whenever we are able to get stable measurements, we can operate. In paralytic strabismus, after six months and wherever needed, adjustable suture techniques has to be used. The second important thing is to eliminate the second image. Sometimes being efficiently monocular is better than being inefficiently binocular. There are different types of translucent occluders available. And this is one of the uh, glasses which is called mince glasses where it is cosmetically acceptable what the above picture what the patient sees through the glasses. So the right eye vision is completely blurred. The bottom picture where there is no cosmetic uh, uh, appearance of that uh, normal frosted glasses. Occluder and contact lenses can be used wherever necessary. In intractable diplopia sometimes you might have to do uh, occlusive eye oils to uh, prevent diplopia. 
So in a, about the common causes of the diplopia are third nerve, fourth nerve, and sixth nerve. In third nerve palsy, prisms can be used in a partial palsy, not in total palsy. Botulinum toxin can be traded in partial palsy as well as isolated with, uh, muscle palsies. Patching can be used when there is a bothersome diplopia. Surgery as and when indicated after six months. In a sixth nerve palsy, of course, chronic needs surgical correction, but in acute phases, sometimes in the waiting period of six months, we can use patching prisms or Botox toxin. Fourth nerve palsy, again, prisms and occluders and Botox can be used and wherever needed, surgery can be advocated. And whether you are a patient or a, a treating doctor with double vision, it's going to be a frequently encountering frustration. Only thing which we have to be very clear about is either make the patient comfortably fused or comfortably monocular. Thank you.